Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Woki, and I'm back with another Dragalia Lost video. Today we're going to be going over the Gala Dragalia with uh, Galagatov, which was just added, and I sure hope I'm saying his name right, otherwise <laughs> people are just going to go like, it's not how you pronounce it. It's fine. He's a new Gala Dragalia. I'm going to go over what he does, as well as Dragon Yule Nevin. Um... And kind of see what they do, see how good they are, whether it's worth summoning. I will note that we know that there are other units coming forward that have not just been revealed to be coming forth yet. The most important one to me, which is of course Dragon Dragon Yule Ilya, which is probably going to show up next banner. So we have to wait on that and some dragons that they promised were coming and have not shown up yet. So good thing to keep in mind. But with that said, hey, let's get into the video. Let's go. Also, if you end up liking this video, leave a like. I forget to say that sometimes. Actually, no, it's not that I forget. I say it terribly. So leave a like because it helps the channel a whole bunch. Comment down below. That also helps out the channel. But I'm, I'm more like, okay, I also don't comment, so I understand if you don't have anything to say. But if you do have something to say, I always enjoy reading it. And subscribe to me if you want more. All right, let's go. Galagatov, the strength of the Blaze Wolf is yours. Captain of the Watch and Grams, a former mercenary known as the Blaze Wolf, Katov was a longtime friend of Oriol. He now looks after the poor masses of Grams with strength and infinite kindness. This is a f the face of a man who has infinite kindness in him. Dual rocking swords, this is the face of kindness. He is actually a very nice man, <laughs> so. I don't know why I'm giving him such guff. He is in fact an axe unit. Where's his swords? Let's find out. Charge blade. When wielding an axe, completely fills the user's sword master gauge. And when swapped to dual swords, it activates a variant of the skill called Crimson Rush. Crimson Rush deals damage to enemies in a line and inflicts scorched. If this skill is used directly after a Zuo raid, a variant called Double Flame will be used instead. Double Flame deals damage to enemies in a line, reduces their defense, and inflicts Scourged. While, an axe, while wielding an axe, skill energy required is 10,450. When swapped in dual swords, damage is 405 or 4 hits, and wow, the skill energy required is actually way less. It's 2,200. I, maybe I'm crazy. I want to say this is maybe the first time I've ever seen this, where it's actually legitimately less. Usually they stay the exact same, and to my memory, if, from what I can recall anyway, my memory's pretty bad. Anyway, after skill change, damage is 584 over 4 hits, 2240 skill energy required, still the same, defense is scorched. Counter Fang, shareable 6. When wielding an axe, the user is, hmm, actually, so, oh no, they'll, they'll tell us right at the end. Uh, the user temporarily assumes a counter stance during which they are immune to knockback. If the user is hit by an attack while in this stance, the skill will deal damage to surrounding enemies. Dispel one buff from each target, restore half the damage taken while using the skill as HP, and immediately remember, uh, remember, ready the charge blade skill for use. If the user is not hit by an attack while in the skill's counter stance, it will immediately ready for use again. Some attacks cannot be countered with the skill, and being energized will not upgrade the skill. Okay, when wielding an axe, 418 over 6 hits, 3,120. Dispels buffs, 50% damage reduction, does not stack. When swapped to dual swords, 254 over 7 hits, 2,240 uh, skill energy required, dispels buffs. After ch skill change, damage is 421 over 8 hits, still skill energy required. And when it's a shared skill, this is exactly what you get. It's 1,544 for the spell buff, okay. That seems excessive, but fine. HP 10% and defense 10%. Increases HP and defense by 10%. Uh. Flame dodge strength equals 10%. When you dodge for 15 seconds, get 10% HP uh, attack up. Dual Sword Mastery 2 grants Gatav a Sword Master Gauge and at the start of quest immediately readies a second skill for use. Also, Gatav begins quest wielding an axe, but when Sword Master Gauge is completely filled, he will swap to dual swords and his first and second skills will be immediately ready for use. <laughs> this gauge will then begin to gradually deplete automatically and activate the following effects until it's depleted. Gatov is granted knockback immunity. Gatov is granted a unique force strike that deals damage to surrounding enemies. Gatov's standard attacks patterns and his first and second skills are changed. After the Swordmaster gauge is depleted, Gatov will swap back to his axe and the skill gauges for his first and second skills will be reset. Hmm. Unbending Will 2, immune to stun and sleep. Royal Protector 2, 
Using Katam's initial skill displayed at the top of the skill list grants him a defense amp with a maximum team amp level of 3. After this amp is granted, his ability will not be granted again for 20 seconds. Wow, that's really good. I mean, it's, it's just a defense amp, but still, it's pretty good. Also, when swapped to dual swords, the seventh attack and Katov center attack combo increases the damage dealt by this, by his next use of double flame or dual demolish by 15%. Damn, this damage increase will not stack. Imagine if it had stacked, that would have been pretty nuts. All right, this is what he's kind of doing. I'm kind of liking what he's doing here with the kind of dual wielding. I think almost absolutely everyone in the entire world expected him not to be an axe unit. <laughs> they expected him to either be blade or sword. One of the two, the one of the ones that used the damn sword. But I guess I felt like he would be better as an axe and you just get sometimes access to a sword. I don't know. But I kind of like what he's doing. I don't know how good he's going to be in fire in general. Not because I think he's bad. I think he actually seems pretty legit to me. It's just that fire has so many good units. So how he stacks up to them, I don't know. But what I do know is that he sounds a lot of fun. And to me, that's enough. Man, looks really cool. It's been a long time wait for this man, too. He's been in the game for so long, and so many people have been wanting him. All right, let's move on to Dragon Yule Nevin. On this Dragon Yule Eve, I give you the gift of her will. That's right, I've killed your wife. Here's her will. I expect at least 50% back. Goodbye. One of the apostles of the Northern Church is a certified lazy bones. The harsh winter is a bother he'd rather avoid. He's Winnie the Pooh, but he's donned some warmer clothes for a mission in the snowy birthplace of Dragon Yule. Stellar Knives. Uh, I just like the name of it. Removes Lock Sigil and summons divine daggers around the user. Does that just remove Lock Sigil in general? Maybe just one. That the, the wording of it sure does make it seem like he just removes the sigil in general, though. These divine daggers will attack automatically while summoned around the user, but their attacks will not be treated as standard attacks. Hmm. So you can't buff it with, I guess, stuff that buffs standard attacks? During sigil's release, the skill calls the user's divine daggers back to the user. Hmm. Hmm. Vertex Apocalypse, shareable 4, deals damage to the target, inflicts Storm Lash, and grants the user a strength amp. During Sigil's release, this skill also deals bonus damage based on the number of Divine Sting attacks applied to the enemies, then calls the user's Divine Daggers back to the user. Hmm. Damage is 1,620 over 1 hit, skill energy required is 7,500. Skill energy required when a shared skill is 7,500. Max sand- oh wow, wow, does it- wow, what? I just, this is a level 3 strength amp with no, no hit back towards it. That's pretty crazy when you consider when I look back at uh, my boy Gitav over here, he had a 20 seconds even on him. But this one, they're like, nah, feel free to get strength. That's crazy. I almost feel he's worth it just to get as a shareable four, just to get that strength amp and storm lash, but whatever. 7,500 is not a bad price to pay at all, I think. Anyway. During ability effect, damage is 1,800 over one hit, bonus damage is 500, skill is required the same, so everything the same. Co-op ability, critical rate 10%. Chain co-op ability, storm lash equals water resistance 8%. Ramiel's Yuletide PIT2 inflicts the lock sigil debuff on the user at the start of quest for 300 seconds. Using stellar knives will remove lock sigil. Huh? So it in fact does remove it, okay. Oh shit, so he just loses the Lock Sigil. <laughs> Using Stellar Knives will remove Lock Sigil, but the skill gauge's fill rate for Stellar Knives and the amount that the gauge filling effect will if its skill gauges are reduced by 80%. Okay, there you go. When Lock Sigil effect wears off, the user will be granted the Sigil Released effect instead. Sigil re Release summons Divine Daggers around the user and grants the user unique 4-strike. This 4-strike has no charge levels equal to the number of Divine Daggers currently summoned around them. Throw daggers equal to the number of levels charged directly ahead and inflict storm lash. Divine daggers that connect with enemies will remain embedded in the enemies and apply divine sting debuff when embedded. Divine sting lowers the target's storm lash resistance and deals damage over time. Divine sting can stack up to four times. Divine daggers summoned around a user will attack automatically, but their attacks will not be treated as standard attacks, but they will not attack automatically when embedded into enemies. 
bog resistance 100%, storm ledge edge 40%, increased chance of inflicting storm lash by 40%. This man is just a storm lash machine that also has a strength amp. Funny enough, based off of this wording, it doesn't sound like you want to use the skill too very often. Yeah, because during sigil release, the skill also deals bonus damage based on total number of divine strength applied. Then calls the users. Well, that's not true. Because sometimes you want it actually to come back to you if they're stuck on there so they can keep attacking, right? Hmm. Yeah, this is a very weird unit. This is also a limited unit that sounds pretty damn good to me, to be honest. For this, the shareable skill at, at, at least. Having a strength amp at level 3, permanent, no downside, and then also Stormlash, and then it only costs 7,500, that's kind of nuts to me. It's doing so much. I think it's actually kind of worth it to have him just for this um, shareable skill, so I definitely think he is worth it. Man, this is going to be tough. I really wanted to save for Ilya, but they've made Dragon Yule Nevin and Tov extremely interesting, so I don't know what I'm going to do. <laughs> I'm going to think about it. But for now, those are the two units. They both seem pretty damn good to me. Tell me what you think down below, if you think that they're extremely good, or if they're extremely meh, whatever you feel. Feel free to tell me, and I'll read it, and see, I'll be like, hmm, very interesting. Or I'll just reply with a funny response, sometimes that's all I have for me. Oh, um, forgive me. That's the end of the video, everyone. I'll see you guys in the next one. You guys have a good night. Goodbye.